Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today I'm sitting with my buddy, Josh Paris. Now, dude. the reason I have Josh here today is Josh and I are always discussing different topics. And as of recently, uh, we're here, this is what, what do we have, March 15th yep, today? halfway through. And we're in Northern California, and why this is relative, um, if you live farther north of Northern California, you're going to be behind in the spawning process and if you live more southern uh part of the united states you're going to be ahead during this process so evaluate it like that not time of month because time of month uh, doesn't really work and we're going to give some water temperatures to think about so i've been calling josh lately and he's like you seen any fish up and so he's he guides new maloney's comanche don hogan, pedro hogan yeah, all the mother load lakes pretty much and so and where I live, I live on a private lake, okay, and I have the delta in my front yard. So I spend a lot of time in shallow grassy fisheries um, when I'm not with Josh. And when I'm with Josh, it's a lot of the time deeper rocky reservoirs. And so we're getting two completely different perspectives here uh, when I'm talking about this. And this is a winter to spring transition leading into pre-spawn. And I, and I want to bring this up because it's... You hear this information, Josh, all the time of like guys are like, oh, it's pre-spawn. Yeah. Okay. It's like middle of February. Okay. It gets hot. Right. And everybody's like all gung ho about pre-spawn, right? <laughs> it warms up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. For me, it's like, for example, I think the Delta right now is uh, the morning temps. And this is always relative to morning temps. Yeah. Um, I think 56, 57 is what I'm hearing for morning temps. Uh, on my private body of water, it's 13 foot deep out in the middle, but the majority of the lake is 7 foot deep or shallower, um, which means it's going to warm faster. Dirtier water warms faster, shallower water warms faster, as deeper reservoirs typically don't warm as fast. They oh, take I a know lot of a longer. couple. Take a lot longer. <laughs> All right, so yeah, like Maloney's right now. So you, what you've been out, out here, what, you got 60 in the mornings, 59? Yeah, 60? just got to 60. Just got yep. to 60. Okay, I'm if starting. A cold, a cold night can snap it back, and we're going to address that. Gotcha. Yeah. I can, typically right now, I'm seeing 52 in the morning. If it's a real cold morning, it'll drop down to 51. Mm -hmm. Conversely, it will warm all the way up to, I mean, we have saw as high as 57, 58. But like you said, mm -hmm. it, people start getting too excited about that end day temp. Oh, I saw 58. <laughs> we're in pre-spawn. I'm like, <laughs> now, nah, by... Six o'clock next morning, you're right back to 52. So let me ask you this. What's the warmest morning temperature you've seen within the last month? Within the last month, uh, in the mother load, I'd say 55, 56 is about the warmest that I've seen. And that was actually Pedro. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys something that I've been researching and evaluating for the last six years living where I'm living, okay? One thing I notice, once the morning temperature hits 58, and I talk to Josh about this all the time, if I walk out there first thing in the morning, sun's just coming over the horizon, if I check that water temperature at any point that it hits 58 in a morning, that starts an incubation period for a percentage of bass that live in that system. And don't ever think anything you say in bass fishing is a 100% rule. Everything's very controversial where you live, the forage, um, the makeup of your lake, maybe and all I, the foods down deep the, it could change but this fish, is a general the fish themselves do weird stuff to where mm -hmm. like you said every rule i've had rules that every every time it's the same and the one time the fish decide to do something different completely just, different yeah so what i want to mention here is so my lake out back josh is coming over to fish today and i want to do this video for you guys my lake's morning temperature is now 60 degrees i've had spawning fish for a couple of weeks and when I tell you that morning temperature hits 58 degrees, this is for largemouth bass. I roughly think it starts happening like at 56 for smallmouth and spotted bass. And what this roughly starts happening is the incubation period. Fish will have eggs in them. Females will have eggs in them from January on, especially spotted bass and smallmouth. Yeah. Um, and, but what happens when I say incubation period... This is typically when you start seeing blossoms start to develop on the trees. Okay, you'll see those uh, the white flowers that bloom on. I don't know what type of tree that is. You may know. Almonds, walnuts, every any fruiting tree starts getting flowers. You on heard it. the man. Any fruiting tree, you yeah. fruits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. kidding aside, typically once that morning temperature hits 58, you're going to start seeing fish shallow here and there. Now, does that mean they're feeding? 
No, you typically will start seeing those cruisers on the sunny, calm days. All right, fish that you cast at and just flee out of there and run. Or you see them do this. They're upright and they kind of, they're tilted up in the sun. And I know you've seen that yep, in yep. multiple pockets where they're tilting. And what I believe that is, is they're absorbing vitamin D from the sun. Yeah, I mean, even getting a full body side into that sun. And like yeah. I said, I mean, we've been seeing mostly spotted bass up right now. Like I said, that 55, 56. Yeah. A handful of large mouth have already started the sunning thing. But like you said, it's not, I mean, I'm talking over the entire Maloney's. Mm -hmm. A couple of areas, you know, there's a, there's a slight window of, you know, I'd say 1% of those large mouth have actually pulled up mm -hmm. and started early. So but, if you listen to what Josh just said and what I just said, Maloney's is not pre-spawn. No, I don't really no, think no. it's kicked into pre-spawn. I'd, I'd say the spots Virgin. are like just tipping that edge of pre-spawn and mm -hmm. they like you said spawn earlier they start doing their thing earlier to where we're starting to get closer to that 55 morning mm -hmm. temp but i mean other than that i mean finding largemouth up shallow and three o'clock in the afternoon you if you burn the banks you <laughs> might find a handful but it's not but like you said they're not in that pre-spawn filling up eating kind of mood they're mm -hmm. in that i'm sitting up here acclimating getting and some sun getting some sun i don't even know if they're fully incubating yet i think they might just be acclimating yeah they could be so what josh is referring to is winter to spring transition these were fish that were in a winter pattern and chances are the bigger percentage of overall fish in the lake are still in that winter pattern slash winter to spring transition they're starting to get near the pre-spawn areas but pre-spawn hasn't overly kicked in and what i want to tell you the difference between winter to spring transition to pre-spawn is actually could be very very small window it could literally i've seen it i've seen the winter to spring transition last less than four weeks i've seen it last four weeks uh i've seen it go a couple of months and what happens is now once your morning temperature i think the incubation period starts at 58 you're going to start catching shallow fish typically around that time now if the forage and stuff is still deep, chances are you're still going to be catching winter pattern fish. Um, even, But if that forage moved up, I think at 58 degree morning temperature, they're willing to come up with it. But this is dependent on the type of lake you fish. Now I want to jump into that water temperature hitting 60 degrees. And this is where mine's at. And it's kind of fascinating because there's something funky going on. It got to 60 degrees. Yeah. Then we had some really cold weather and windy weather. And I notice... Once the morning water temperature first hits 58 and you get windy, cold weather, it is really tough. It's typically what you think they're going to go home we're run just, on. We were just talking about this the other day. and it, I mean, I experienced the exact same thing you're saying is, I mean, I had four, we had that week of like four good, straight, solid, warm days. And that's when I started seeing 58 you know, in the afternoon. Them. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> we were doing good. And then I saw that cloudy day come in. I'm like, dude, it is gonna blow open uh-huh that was the worst day by far on the water in like three weeks he like, called me and yeah. i was in shock <laughs> and then i went out right after the call and got my butt whipped yeah. on my private lake and there's something going on in that window and i think it's when once it hits 58 degrees they're thinking differently um it's changing their behavior even if it warms up later in the day those fish are curious and they'll go look now, that's not going to officially move them. They'll go up. Like, you ever catch a fish real early spring shallow and it runs straight under the boat? That is a winter to spring transitional fish. His winter haunt, his hangout spot, or her hangout spot, was down deep. They are not comfortable with hanging up shallow yet. When you start catching those fish and they go sideways or try to horseshoe in the area that they're living or go up even shallower, typically they're comfortable up there um, at that point. And so what I want to mention with the 60 degrees now, is I have a small percentage, I would say roughly five to 10% of the fish in my lake maybe are moving up to spawn. So now this is very crazy and you guys have probably never heard this term ever. Um, it's something I refer to as a mock spawn. Mm -hmm. Now the first full moon and once your morning water temperature is over 58 is what a lot of the bass fishermen say is when you're first gonna start seeing bed fish. Um, what happened for my house the water temperature morning temp hit 59, okay, when the first full moon hit, and it already hit 58, so I think the incubation period was actually starting. 
I don't know if it's some sort of pheromone or something the female bass put off, but there was no buck bass. There was no little males building beds, bro. <laughs> Nothing. Empty. Like empty. I remember we talked about it. Yeah, yeah, I was fishing every day. I'm catching drop shot fish out deep. Okay. I'm go I'm I'm positioned in a foot of water with the boat casting out. Like yeah. I would see if they were under me. Yeah. The very next day it was like a 98% moon morning temperature was 59 in the water and there was males and females <laughs> on beds together <laughs> and they were doing the dance yeah, yeah. Overnight. and I'm, I'm overnight i was literally out there like till 5 30 the night before yeah. and when i say the mock spawn i think the females do something that makes the bass want to court them. You ever see a, a buck bass leave a bed and he spins or chases the female? He's trying to bring her back. Well, this instantly happened. I have buck bass deep that grabbed females and ran them over to spots that didn't even look like beds. I think they were previous beds and they just hijacked them. They're like, there's a Motel 6 boom. right here, yeah, boo. Let's go. Let's All right, go. Bo, yeah. let, hey, yeah. hey, hey, look, I got $65 and there's a... Take it where you can get it. $65, make it holla. Yeah. I was playing. Just playing. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, dead serious. They brought them to beds, and then a cold snap hit two days later, and there was nothing on oh, beds. Yeah. Yeah. But I caught actually two bedfish that day. Later. And if yeah, too late later the, no. the same day they were spawning actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then two days later there was nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And I called Josh and I'm like, dude, I've I've caught a glance of this before. I wasn't a hundred percent certain, but now I'm confident there's a mock spawn that takes place. And this happens so quickly. Even my buddy Matt Frazier, he loves to bed fish, and bed fishing's his thing, and don't worry, he ain't hurting your fish. Calm down. <laughs> um, he goes, dude, I've seen fish move up in 30 minutes that weren't there. And Josh has told me many times, I, I was literally just there, and next thing you know, there's a pair of fish well, there. I have a couple of stories about that happening, but even right now on Maloney's, there's a few beds that are there. And Is nobody home? Nobody home. I and, bet you they were. Well, at one point now, I'm sure a little male was like, it's pretty warm up here this afternoon. I'm going to start my thing. Water tent drops at night. He's gone. Never yeah. come back. But there have been a few beds that they're cleared off spots. There's only one way in mm -hmm. 10 foot of water. Somebody was up there sipping Somebody on a Medellin Somebody was Shalata. up there checking it out. Yeah. But as far as actually seeing anybody or any consistency to beds, yeah. it's gone. Like I said, it's a mock spawn. of It could have mm -hmm. been even that last moon. It got warm a little bit. Somebody pulled up, thought about it, and mm -hmm. then the water temp just plummeted again. So this is really weird, and you're going to experience this today. Uh, Josh hasn't fished over here Ooh, since last summer? Yeah, at least, yeah. Or last, no, it was last summer. Yeah, you had a, No, I'm 41 now. No, this, that was the year before. So maybe it was this last spring, because we were, we were trying to beat the lake record at that time. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. anyhow, this is kind of fascinating. It's like 30 plus mile an hour wind outside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cold and windy. Um, dark skies. Now, typically, once the water temperature is 60 degrees, I'm thinking we're going to get a home run, okay? That we're going to crack them, and we may, we may not. Um, say, everybody uh, thinks my house is a pay pond. <laughs> they don't realize actually how tough uh, it we, is. We've had some really tough days out there. Yeah, like, yeah and we're, we're super novice, you know? So it's, it's not like we fish every uh, single day. I tell you, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, I want to tell you guys something cool. Uh, that, Like I told you, that 5 to 10% of my fish, they're actually on beds. And you cannot catch a fish shallower than six feet unless it's actually on a bed. Otherwise, the only active fish are below seven feet. And I I'm like tried to wrap my head around this, bro. And I'm like, this is really strange that there's spawning fish, but there's no pre-spawn activity. In the, and I'll tell you what it is. The pre-spawn is activity chasing schools of crappie on the bottom and yeah. if those crappie came up shallow or good. the crappie were gone and it was all crawdad bite there would be a pre-spawn bite shallow next to spawning fish and it was i cannot wrap my head around it for a while there i'm like why do i have to be doing finesse stuff out in the middle they won't touch an a-rig my water got clear they won't touch a jerk bait blows my mind i don't know why my fish are ultra selective uh, this is another thing anybody goes oh you can throw anything you want in your pond and whack them Good luck. Yeah. Good luck with that one. But it's really funky. I, I, I'm seeing the same exact thing right now is that the fish that I have shallow on a lot of the mother load lakes, mm -hmm. they're not playing. 
I mean, they're my big bait thing is about the only thing that I can really get some love on. But mm -hmm. even that, I mean, it, it's like pulling teeth. I mean, you can get them to follow, you can get them interested. Mm -hmm. I think I told you about my aquarium spot. I mean, I got a spot right now with 50 to 60 fish that are between three and, you know, teener size fish that you cannot get them to budge. I, you can and I got, a, every I got the same thing on my lake. Yeah. There's a spot looks like a fish tank, but good luck. Yeah, they, but and that's, they're not up there to feed. That mm -hmm. is not their prerogative. They're up there sunning. They're up there hanging out. It, the, the feed thing, I think you have a better chance adjacent to that area catching them before 10 o'clock. Before that sun gets up and they get up there, mm -hmm. that's the, gonna be the time when I think they're actually eating. But when yeah. they're in that area, up shallow, like you're saying, mm -hmm. they're, not, they're, they're not there to eat. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So pretty soon, um, now there is tricks to catching these shallow fish. Of course, if uh, if you happen to find a fish on a bed, you could bed fish it. Just uh, if you're not in a tournament, please don't box the fish. If you catch it, put it back. Avoid catching the male if you can. He's the one that guards primarily. If you see them spinning together, leave them alone. Give it about 45 minutes. Let the eggs get deposited. Uh, then don't mess with the male. If you can happen to catch the female, good for you. Get a picture center right back. But what I want you guys to absorb from this is that this time of year in that winter to spring transition deal things can happen remarkably fast so keep an open mind uh don't be thinking you're catching deep fish don't be thinking you're catching shallow fish be willing to bounce around a lot a lot of people think like this is the home run time of year and it's gonna be some of those days are gonna probably be the best days you've ever had but they can also be the most difficult so when someone says spring bite pre-spawn baits so, like oh we're cranking this and that um have a Ned rig, have a drop shot, be prepared because Josh is one of the most talented anglers I know. I fish every single day and there's times I can go out there and do every single top five pre-spawn bait that's in every single YouTube video and it ain't gonna work, man. Well, and I, I think even to speak to that same point about like kind of you said, keeping an open mind about mm -hmm. toughness is, Kind of an example I have of just being willing to keep checking new areas and keep moving further back is to lay out a little scenario. I've had these fish on the sandbar for about two weeks now. I mean, there's mm -hmm. 30, 40 spots, all good big spots that have been swinging. They're one of the only shallow fish that I have, and they're not even shallow. They're sitting deep. We're getting them to run baits up shallow. Oh, okay, so you're going deep too shallow. Yeah, deep, deep too shallow. Okay. In the last week, they disappeared. All of them. Gone. Weird. And... I really think what it is, I even kind of started refining them further back on a secondary point closer to where they're heading. So they're, they're, they're starting they're, to transition. They're starting to actually transition. They already transitioned mm -hmm. to that very main lake point, and mm -hmm. now they're starting their head back to where you've been hitting fish and they disappear. Try jumping forward a point or two, especially this time of year. If you get a storm, maybe backwards, but I mean, for the most part, I don't think they really go back i think they're gonna keep going forward yeah. just be prepared to look guys remember 58 degree morning temperature the incubation period is going to start i've seen it last as little as seven days um and go out to a couple of weeks before i've seen fish up um that's kind of in between moons the closer you get to a 90 percent plus moon and your water temperatures are above 58 first thing in the morning uh fish are gonna just start transitioning to shallow if it stays steady stays calm chances are you're gonna have a full pre-spawn coming on um, so throw those more aggressive baits. If you see that morning temperature and it starts to progress backwards, you don't see shallow bait, uh, start looking deep first. But be prepared to bounce around the lake. Um, I want to do more talking points with videos uh, with Josh like this because I think you guys get a different perspective versus just what I want to talk about or what I want to say. Or Josh strikes a, a, a little light in my brain that's like, aha, uh -huh, oh yeah, I've never mentioned that before. So uh, take this video for what it is, guys. Just be prepared. No, nothing's ever going to be super easy. Um, and those super easy days are a great blessing uh, when we do have them. But just be prepared for the worst and be prepared to bounce around a lot. Don't have these preconceived notions of it's going to be a winter bite. It's going to be a pre-spawn bite. Just know, you know, just below that or just above 55 to that 58, 60 degree water temperature can be very tricky, but it can also be super rewarding. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman, guys. Josh was going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say just uh, one thing I a lot of people don't do that it really helps me this time of year. Get up shallow and just go look. 
Yeah. You put your boat in 10 foot of water and just cruise around and go looking. That, mm -hmm. That'll be the biggest thing versus you casting for that hour. Go look. It's going to give you more information than full throwing blast a big, trolling motor. Full blast Ooh. trolling motor. Go see what you can find. And I recently found lay down wood. That was my my key thing that I had mm -hmm. just because I was up burning some bank. You know, that, you're not you're not saying you lay on, lay on wood, do you? No, no, no. I. It, <laughs> maybe maybe all right anyways uh but yeah get up there go look around go go have a view of what's actually going on up there before you start chucking shallow for an hour go have a look yeah that's true guys if you're not looking you're not hunting you're not trying you're not bouncing around between baits you won't be the first to find the little magic pattern that's working that time informativefisherman.com on all the social media sites i'm going to put josh is guide subscription down here for the mother low lakes in northern california you want to pick this dude's brain get an instructional class go throw big baits or just learn to catch multiple fish in different ways throughout a day this is your man right here is one of my best buddies uh this dude i couldn't bring him any more highly recommended for you guys so appreciate it we'll see you next time later